that I introduce Keiko Agura. Thank you for introduction. Hello, everybody. How nice to see you. This year, I have been worrying about that many foreign visitors cannot come to Hiroshima. And uh, so until last year, we had uh, many activities like, and uh, we had the uh, uh, Hiroshima survivors testimony. And after that, and including so many uh, participants too, uh, we had a very nice discussion from all over the world. But this year, we are depressed so much. But thanks to you, I have such a kind of, uh, such a wonderful opportunity. And uh, I would like to share my story with you. Uh, I, I want to use my PowerPoint. In my PowerPoint, there are uh, several uh, oil paintings. They were painted by Motomachi High School in Hiroshima City. And then I will show you. I hope uh, you can understand my well, Made in Hiroshima English. So Hiroshima already you know. 1945, August the 6th, I'm going to tell you what I was, where I was, and what I have experienced. Maybe some of you know, those are pictures. This is uh, uh, the video and the full direction of Hiroshima City. Those four pictures were given to Hiroshima from National Archives. And then uh, the former director of the museum put together and made this. Two months after the bomb, from west to south, now we are facing at south. You can see white area that's uh, set to inland sea. Until the seashore, Hiroshima was completely destroyed, like this, nothing left. Now, camera is moving to east area, east section. And then these uh, photos were taken from the hypocenter, 20, uh, 360 degrees. Okay, those are the buildings. Uh, former banks, insurance companies, and so on. Behind these buildings, there was the city center, downtown area. And you see the chimney, that direction here, this direction, there is JR Hiroshima train station. In front of the station, there is the hill called Futabayama Hill. And then I was the other side of the hill. Maybe I was around here, uh, east part of the city. This scene you see is exactly what I saw from a little bit higher place. I was looking down to the city. City was completely destroyed like this. Okay, you see red area uh, that shows a completely burnt down and uh, destroyed place. And the yellow part that shows a completely destroyed place. And then I was that time living here, around here. That is 2.4 kilometers. This is, uh, uh, so this circle means 2,000 meters from the hypocenter from here. And then, as you see, and uh, that white area, all of the white area were broken, partially broken, maybe 50% of my, my house, my town where I was, 
and uh, my neighborhood was completely uh, destroyed. And then, you know, from the hypocenter fire reached near to my house. And then I was so scared. And then you see seven rivers and the two, and the, uh, I was born here very close about 1000 meter from the hypocenter. I was born here. And then after that, I moved this area 24, number 24, where my elementary school was. And then this is the Hiroshima city and uh, such a huge area, so-called black rain and rain contaminated with uh, radiation. And then I have experienced because I was living here, the age of the rain. This is my uh, former elementary school. I was going there and uh, until six, I entered school there, but the Hiroshima didn't have major, major bombing, air raid. So we Hiroshima people were worrying why, wondering why Hiroshima city was skipped. Other cities had a severe damage. So my father was con concerned about this and he said, well, we have to move as soon as possible. Next will be Hiroshima, he said. Then I moved and uh, the other side of the hill here. This is my house. You see the shrine gate and here, there was a small park where my father cremated over 700 victims here. And then this is my elementary school. I was going and until the bomb was dropped every day there. And then you see the shrine gate, that means I was living near Shinto shrine. And then during uh, the World War II, and uh, we were told in case something happened, go to a temple or a Shinto shrine, there might be in the first aid station and doctors because people believed that from all over the center of the city and many people and cross a bridge, fire reached and this area was born and that they came to my place here because they wanted to, to ex experience, uh, they want to find uh, doctors there. Uh, this is my elementary school uh, life, school girl. And uh, I was this time seven years old because my birthday is August the 4th. That means when the bomb was dropped and uh, seven years plus two days. So usually I go to uh, school but the time to time, there were small airplanes attack, uh, gun shooting from the airplane. Why I was, I am crying is, uh, you know, one day I heard a tremendous gun shooting sound. We rushed to the shelter, but from the shelter, I opened the door and saw part of my house was burning. That means in case, I were on the road, I might be shot. And the teacher said, I was at school, okay, kids go back as soon as possible. And they jumped into your shelter. I was crying because all of my classmates disappeared, you know, they left. And they finally by the stone lantern, I was alone and always I was crying, mom, I will be shot, I'll be shot. So this is my daily life until atomic bomb was dropped. This is the day when the bomb was exploded. This was painted also high school student. In the morning of August 6, all of a sudden my father said, Keiko, you shouldn't go to school today. Why not? 
I said, my father said, last night was so、uh, funny. Around midnight, we had the air raid warning so many times. So we rushed to the shelter, waited. Nothing happened, but I heard the siren and we tried to sleep. Then another warning, again rushed to shelter. Several times we have experienced. My mother said, No, I don't want to、uh, go to shelter. I want to stay here. I want to die if so. Father scolded and then pulled her and pushed her into the shelter. So that's what this is the moment. On that day, I was alone on the road. I felt a tremendously bright flash. And、uh, everything what I was seeing turned to white. And then, secondly, there was a strong blast. I was like in the midst of a tornado, and I was blown down on the road. I was unconscious for a while. When I opened my eyes, everything where I saw. Was completely changed, roof tiles were scattered, and then I saw many rubbish and branches, and all the neighborhood, all the houses were、uh, broken. In front of me, only a cottage、uh, touched with the straw roof was burning. That means, and by original flash. And the、uh, flammable thing started to burn immediately. That means secondary、uh, the blast attack. Then a、uh, certain time fire stopped, and then people were caught under the crash down buildings. That means there were so many people they tried to to find、uh, to help their、uh, family. Because they couldn't leave that place, they were asking, "Mom, help me!" And they were try to pull out, but the secondary another big fire reached. Then many family、uh, members or and the friends had to leave, knowing that they were still alive, but being chased by fire. And then、uh, after that,、uh, I returned home. Before that,、uh, in the darkness, first sound I heard was my little brother's voice. I returned home. My house was broken, and the ceiling was blown up, and a hundred thousand pieces of glass stuck on the wall. But my father was so lucky; he was behind a big pine tree, over two hundred years old, and then he was saved. But later, toward the evening, many wounded people、uh, arrived, like my uncle.、Uh, many pieces of glass stuck on his back and bleed in the ridge. Many wounded people came. I step out. All of a sudden, oh, a black rain started to fall. On my blouse, there were spots, charcoal color, gray spots. I thought, what shall I do? My mother will scold me because of my dirty blouse. I thought. And the center of the city was like this. You see, this red part is not the hypocenter. The, there is a、uh, A-bom dome, you see, and the hypocenter is a fun hundred sixty meters away. Around here, there is a、uh, the hypocenter, and then most of high school students, like thirteen, fourteen years old, were working inside the city, more、um, center of the city, to break down houses. You see, white. White area. That means people were breaking houses to make a fire break to divide the city.、Uh, the here, especially this is a big fire break, and now we call this、uh, Peace Boulevard. 
And then uh, my brother was here on the fifth, uh, one day before the bombing. But on that day, and uh, my brother was second year, but the first year students over 300 were working here, all of them died. Out of around uh, 7,000 students, around 6,000 students died here. And uh, there was the military headquarters here and the inside the mold here, there was the bunker. Inside the bunker, those days all the students were mobilized and 50 years old girls were working. Around about 90 girls were divided into three groups and then uh, they were rotated in 24 hours they were working. One of my friends, she was 15 years old and she told me miraculously she could survive because she was in the shelter. But the other group waiting outside of the shelter, most of them died. And then, and from there, students helped uh, the commander and, uh, and where enemy airplanes were, you know. And then even students were and uh, working, you see, July the 25th and this is August. So what we were doing, American airplanes took such a precise, minute picture, but underneath of the airplane, we Japanese were doing the drill of how to put the fire with a full uh, bucket of water and uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, and they throw to the fire. Ridiculous. My father was a leader of that group, of the group, uh, drill. I saw and the mothers and the sisters, they were working without knowing there was a big difference between American power and Japanese power. And this is where I live. This is Hiroshima Station and the white area was once a drill parade for military uh, service. But uh, those days there were uh, the potato field where students were working. My brother, he was, uh, that time 13, he was working in the potato field and he could notice American airplane B-29, the bomber. So over the radio, students learned the roaming sound of the airplane. And then my brother was looking up the sky, oh, here comes B-29. Oh, something was released, black dot, that was atomic bomb. But a second before explosion, airplane B-29 dropped the bomb and then tried to, you know, leave as soon as possible. And then a bomb exploded. All the students were beaten on the potato field. When he, my brother came to himself, he found he had a burn on his face and, and the hand, but he climbed up the hill here. And he saw the mushroom crowd was coming up. According to what he said, top was pink color. And then he saw underneath of the mushroom crowd, city was completely burning. And then he, uh, the, uh, going down to my house. There was my house on the other side. And that time this area was broken, the fire reached to my area. We thought this area was the target. And then my mother said, oh, your brother is so lucky. He's out of his house, she said. And then my brother coming back and mom and my mother said, oh, we hit the bomb. No, my brother said, city is in frame. City was destroyed, a single bomb. We couldn't believe. A single bomb? He said, yes. Moreover, many wounded sufferers are coming 
to my town. What she said, then I started to step out. When I step out from my house, I was here, many people were coming to, and then outside of my house, I saw many wounded people make a line. I first sensed their burnt hair and the long line of people, the skin was peeling off and the rag, like rag-like clothes. And some of them just, you know, like ghost or like zombie, you know, they entered. So, such a thing happened outside of my house was like this. This is the shrine, people are coming. So my house was around here. In front of my house, many people are coming to the sh shrine. And then on the road, people are squatting and the line. They didn't say anything, any word except the water. Somebody seized my leg and said, give me water. As soon as the hearing water, everybody started to say water, water. So because of that, I went back and got the water from the well and delivered. People seemed happy, but in front of me, two persons died. I was shocked. What shall I do? I killed them. And then toward the evening, my father told me, children, you didn't give water to the dehydrated people who had the severe burn. My brother said, oh, Hiroshima people, everybody, everybody know we shouldn't give water. I didn't. So because of that, I told a lie. Oh, I didn't do such a thing. I didn't give water. I told a lie and since then, I couldn't consult with my family members. And then that became my in invisible scars. More than 10 years, I couldn't forget. I couldn't forgive myself. I, I, st I continuously blame myself. Next day, this is what I saw. Until the seashore, I saw the city was completely burned. I remember city kept on burning all night and they changed like this. From the next day, people started to cremate. This is the line of the smoke where my father was cremating. From the top of the hill, I saw oh, my father was still, uh, is still working. My father couldn't tell us what he was doing. He said, don't come to the park. In the park, there were tired, several hundreds of dead body in the park. And then very bad smell reached my home every day. And then elementary school kids, they had to leave from the city and then evacuated in the temple in the mountain area. My other brother, he was fifth grade. I was second grade and I stayed at home from nine to 12 years old children. They were not told what happened in the city. And then Japan, the day Japan surrendered, that's August 15, all of a sudden priest opened the main door and they said, what can you see in front of you? Children said, the Buddha. Yes, with the Buddha, now your parents, sisters, and brothers are in the heaven, sitting with Buddha. Children bursting into tears. And then this is 1945. Such place over 2000 to even the orphans returned home. Even we survivors couldn't find out anything to, to eat. We were starved. Such a place, many children as orphans returned. Since then, I used to see 
children were running around, homeless children. Some of them were under the crushed down buildings. They were so hungry. But uh, adults, they started so hard. And then in a short days, a couple of days later, we had electricity and the water supply and so on. And the three days later, we are so happy to see one burnt streetcar was running. Incredible power we felt. City was dead, nothing moved, but we saw something was moving. And then we tried to uh, the work so hard. Four years later, the special law to, for construction and uh, passed, and we got the budget from the government started to create. One year later, and uh, 50, 90, 50, we made, uh, uh, you know, found our baseball team called Hiroshima Cup. Still now we have. And then all the children were so happy making the handmade board and then playing, playing baseball. And then we had the hope, okay, let's start to work and then create the new city. And then until that time, what time? And uh, we, we were depressed because there was very bad rumor. It's better not to, not to get married who were in the city because people were afraid to be annoyed and then discrimination. And then as a little girl, we girls, and uh, stop to talk where we are. People try to forget, but we are shocked because every day people were dying. My neighbors, my friends, my relatives, somebody who didn't have any scars nor burned. That is radiation effect. People did not know. So many people entered the city still full of radiation to find out their family members and they died. But we tried to create a new city in spite of such horror, such fear and anguish. This is uh, 12 years later, Hiroshima city was like this. You see, we have like a kiosk, a shacks, and they're selling something. It is said, killing beer, maybe you know. I was surprised they were selling. And then there were a signs of doctors and the people have a parade seems a kind of event. And over there, there was museum. It seems this is a happy moment, no. We learned that the world is, was competing another new bombs. We were shocked and then we kept silent. We tried to forget, we are sacrificed. So because of that, and then the world had a good lesson, but still many nuclear weapons have been producing. And the one of the brave survivor and uh, for the first time spoke out, look at me, I am one of the survivors, look at my scars. And then for the first time, we appeal about the menace of radiation and so on. So this is nowadays Hiroshima, a peace park, memorial park. There is in the center of uh, the cenotaph, and it is said in Japanese on the surface of the chest, let all the souls here rest in peace for we shall not repeat the evil. So this for we shall not repeat the evil. This is our pledge and this is survivor's prayer and also we here means 
you and me, all human beings. So because under the mushroom cloud, nobody cannot survive, you see? So we have the same destiny. So now we have to work together as uh, the, at the big body because of that. And uh, we need all of the people know what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Every year, many people are coming and are learning. Learning or knowing is the first step to create the real world peace. Learning and talking each other. And then the last one is doing something what you can do. High school students draw a picture and then uh, the, I myself is telling my experience for future generations. And then now we are in the midst of coronavirus, COVID-19, and we have the same kind of fear. And then nowadays the evil is coronavirus. And uh, there is so many coincidences like radiation and 75 years ago, and many people were dying. And I asked the doctor, doctor, why they were dying? There, isn't there any good shot? I asked, we asked, or medicine? Doctor shook his head. I don't know, I don't know how to cure them. That's the same situation nowadays we have. And then, so by and by, uh, people try to work together because nowadays without working together, we cannot defeat the evil coronavirus, you know. Now we learn solidarity is the most important thing. So now I am so happy that in front of you telling my story and then hearing my experience, please feel not only knowing what happened, please feel how we suffered, how we were so desperate, how we struggled against ill speaking and our trauma like my trauma. Many people have invisible, invisible disease. Please understand. Let's work together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Agura-san, for sharing your experiences with us today. Um, I'd like to open up um, questions for you. Um, I think we just had one come in. I'll take a look. Okay. Uh, anybody in, in um, chat, if you have any questions you'd like to ask Agurasan? We have a couple questions here. I'm going to. Okay. Closer, this whole um, to microphone. I'll switch over. Camera is right there. You just say it. See the camera? Cool. There it is. Yes, I have a question. My name is uh, Charles Costa, and you mentioned having to go to follow shelters, follow warnings, and it kind of got old, like you were warnings happening at midnight and told to go to a, a shelter. Was that the result of bombers coming over? And were they dropping dummy bombs or real bombs, you know, conventional bombs or leaflets? That's my question. So, how do I answer that 
point is, could you say, could you tell me the point is, your question point is how? My question. Yes, the point of question you ask me, you were in. Why the warning is to go to fallout shelters? Yes. Fallout shelters. Day or night. Yes. And the then. Planes coming over yes. and dropping conventional explosives. Yes, yes. About, yes, like you told me about the conventional weapons and so on. And then, yes. You, your experience, the, my experience, we rushed to the shelter, but the shelter was useless when we had a bomb. We believed in case we have bomb, that means conventional bomb, uh, we'll be safe in the shelter. But in the center of the city, we couldn't make shelter. So only outside of the shelter, we could make shelter. So uh, the, we are thinking, when there was an air raid warning, okay, it's the time to go to the shelter. It takes time. And we run and run, try to find out the public shelter. So that most of the people in the center part were like that. That means without shelter, we couldn't survive. So because of that, my father wanted to make a shelter. So we moved into the, uh, into the suburbs. So I wonder, uh, the, during the war, I wonder uh, that even American students were worrying about in case something happened. And then were you try to make a shelter after the museum, uh, after the bombing? And then uh, the, after the bombing, people learned how dreadful the bombing was and then I, I wonder, I want to know whether American students, American uh, children, do they want to make a shelter in case of another uh, the nuclear weapon or so? Didn't you hear such kind of story from American ordinary people? They, you know, visiting the museum, they know what's the nuclear explosion. And then because of that, American people must need to, to know about the what's nuclear weapon. And I would like using this chance to, to tell after the bomb, first, only we Japanese are victims, no, I met so many American sufferers, like uranium miner, and then the soldiers, and uh, they worked for nuclear test. Those people uh, came to Hiroshima, and then they visited Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. And then I was shocked. And then some of them were crying. They just passed by, in front of the, uh, the window of the pictures of burning houses, but they stop and they try to cry because they said, oh, my brother, he lost his hair after the uh, nuclear test and he died. Oh, you and me have the same experience, she said. So Hiroshima is the place to learn what other people's sadness or suffering. So because of that, uh, I feel that we have to share our story together. Many American people I met are still suffering after nuclear test. I met them. They came here how to cure. And I met some doctors from Chernobyl. And then I met some people suffering from power plant accident. And I met the people from Pacific area 
especially Longlap Islands. Oh, they came here because when the uh, so-called bravo, you know, hydrogen chest was uh, occurred, and then the, the there were so many people who were contaminated by fallout that was full uh, white powder. They came and they told me and they showed me their scars. Many of them had a uh, thyroid cancer, you know, scars. So long that people said, we left, we left our island, you know, and then all of the, uh, the islanders, they left from their hometown, home island, and they moved to Mejato Island. They lived there. And then, and uh, after some time, we were shocked, those island people came and that, that the Japanese uh, government is thinking about the ocean dumping. If you uh, the throw uh, the nuclear waste that came from nuclear power plant in the ocean, that means the ocean is your rice field. If so, for revenge, I want to scatter poison to your rice field because I, we have to eat seafood from our ocean. So you shouldn't uh, contaminate the ocean. He said, they said, I mean. So we have to think about the, this situation and the ocean uh, spread and the continent and the United continents, all the continents, the continent you live in and we live and the Africa and the Europe everywhere. So ocean is, ocean and the air is uh, though they are our pleasure. And the Japanese, first I want to, I want to apologize because after the, you know, uh, Japanese power plant accident, I learned many American people came soldiers, so-called Tomodachi, they call Tomodachi Sakse, you know, project, and they helped. And I learned they were contaminated. American soldiers like Tomodachi and they help us. I know that. And we contaminated the ocean. So I have to apologize. And also I hope I have to apologize the people during the war, Japanese militarism invaded to Asian country to China and the, you know, Singapore, such like, and the other uh, places, Indonesia. And so I feel so, so, so sad because, because of that, we need the real world peace. And I, I want to apologize that the Pearl Harbor attack, I visited Pearl Harbor and I understand, I understand the sadness and then of their own and that they have. And still now family has been suffering. Many people died during the World War II and that during the nuclear test. We have the same sadness and also same joy. And that we were starved after the bombing, but I was so happy because America and uh, very kind people sent canned food to Hiroshima. And for the first time, we saw canned food. And one day, my father, you know, and brought back a big canned food. We were hungry. And during the war, we ate some grass and the potato. So rice was controlled. We couldn't have really cooked rice. And we are so hungry and seeing that father opened the can and then we found inside there were cherries. Oh, cherries, we are hungry. Why don't you find out meat or cooked vegetable? We blamed my father. Father said, I'm sorry, I cannot read English, he said. 
that's the moment I determined, okay, I will study English. Actually, all my English came from uh, Japanese education. So every day after the war, I was marching, they say, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that. That time, if we learn English, I can reach something good, tasteful thing. Then I enter my class at that time, entering exam, I said, oh, I can speak English quite well. And the teacher said, why don't you say? I said, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but came to uh, the X, I changed. O, P, Q, R, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Something wrong, I couldn't understand. That's my English, you know, vocabulary. But now, thanks to English, I can tell my story. And now I, I want to say thank you. And I want to apologize American people what Japanese did and what the Japanese did to other uh, the world. We have to thank not only blame, but also condolence is more important. And then because of that, we need to understand the inner mind of the sufferers. I, I think Hiroshima is the place not only telling our story, but also listen to the sufferers, the murmuring low voice. Please tell us what you have been confronting. So I told a lot, but I want to express my feeling. Thank you, American people who helped us. Now we are friends and we are the fighters, American citizens and we Japanese citizens have to work to create real world peace. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We, we do have quite a few more questions. Um, we have another question here in the museum. I'll switch it over to her. Thank you, Migoro-san. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Linda Miller. In, in 1988, I came to Japan on a Keisai Koho Fellowship, and we came to Hiroshima and went to the museum. Is this the same museum, or have you changed it? Oh, really changed. And then now we have really good uh, and the museum, a little bit changed. The, the, not only the building, that means add more personal information, more photos of the, uh, the victims or the families, and the more details, and some touchy panels even children can study. So there is a good museum tour on the website, I think. And uh, I would like to visit your museum, I can see. Yeah, and then uh, the former and the uh, director of the museum, so often he told me, ah, that's great. So at the conference I met and the staff from your museum, I can see your museum. Yes, completely changed right now, please come. Visit. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna. We are gonna turn to chat next and and look at some of the questions we have in there. Yes. One question: um, Have you told your story many times over the years? And who were your audiences? How did they react to your story? And do they listen and take away important messages that you are sharing? Well, there were. You know, at first, I was reluctant to tell my story during 50 years. And then, but uh, one day, a high school American students said, Keiko, why don't you tell your story directly in English? And at first, they were wearing Yukata and like this. 
but hearing my story, they were so quiet and so eagerly, they tried to listen to, they want to learn more and more. And the students pull my, my uh, the blouse and said, Keiko, what can I do for the world peace? They learned and they want to do something as, as, much, as soon as possible. Early days, the, the, the people, Americans, thinking and the dropping uh, bomb was completely right to decision, 100%. So many years ago, I visited America. But the, the rate of saying something like that has been changing smaller, almost equal. And the more and the more people are coming, especially after uh, former President Obama came. Many people said, where did he stand? I want to stand and feel. So we have more and more people after hearing my story and uh, I'll come back with my family, they said. So hearing true stories face to face is the most important, I think. Some more questions? Yes, thank you. Um, we have a question here. Um, they were wondering how long it was before you were able to get a permanent home after the bomb, and did you stay in the same area? Well, my house was not completely dis destroyed. Half, and the we mended, the we stayed. But the center part, most of the place was completely destroyed. Those people left, and the many people died there, of course. But the newcomers entered. Hiroshima has been changed, and the newcomer and ended, and then so. And uh, we try to find out the people, my former neighbors, it's difficult. But I stayed there. But there was a very horrible rumor. Station army will be so cruel and the girls might be raped. So short time after the war, I evacuate to the mountainside. But that was not true. And then station army people were not that bad. I returned soon. And then, but, uh, oh, it took such a long time. And the uh, radiation disappeared by the, it seems by the end of that day, 1945. But uh, people actually did not know center of the city was uh, uh, contaminated by radiation. Without to know, there was a severe censorship. We couldn't talk about radiation nor atomic bomb. We didn't know. Just that there is so-called ten years blank in Hiroshima. Thank you, Rigorasan. We had a, another question about um, following the end of the war. Did you go back to school? Did you have to perform work instead um, in the meantime? We were just curious about your experiences following the end of the war itself. Well, it was so difficult to really school open and the next year, spring, that's a new semester. But some of the school buildings left partially and burned or so, and then some of the schools had lessons outside, no school building. In my school, like this, in the morning, and the other school students used, and the afternoon, and my school students used. But it started very late, several months later, because people were wounded, and the teacher was so eager to find out. This is my school was a little bit away, the center part. It was so difficult. Some of the school, hundreds of students died. But so next year, my school opened. 
And then education was completely different. We are surprised. My school book, you know, erased by black ink. This, that was a former uh, textbook, teacher said. So, you know, cross out here. That was not true. Cross out here. So I understand what, what alas, alas, uh, we were learning false things like that. And that to get to have a textbook was so difficult. But the worst thing was to get uh, the food. So black markets first appeared in front of the station, but the people and uh, bringing our valuables and they went out and to get to, to change food. So before we start study, we start to find something to eat. Thank you, Rigoro san. The last question, did you ever tell your family about giving water to the victims and what was their initial response to you? No, I didn't tell them. To tell the truth, I told, you know, my brother and sister is this, miraculously could survive, but we didn't talk during 70 years. 70 years later, finally, all of my brother and sister got together. All night we talked, and that was the last time my elder brother passed soon after that. Before I die, I want to tell what happened. So my sister told me for the first time that she was so scared. So during one month, she didn't step out from the gate, from the house, from our house. And then, so my classmates, for the first time, we met each other 70 years later. That was coached by uh, President Obama visited. So that was a kind of the time people think Oh, before we die, we have to do something. We have to tell what happened. I was surprised. Some of my friends had a hard time to have baby. And then that day, and uh, I didn't go to school because my father said, don't go to. But some of my friends, they were in at school and they, in the playground, she showed me her scars around neck. She said, I was looking up beat sky. And we were more than two kilometers away, but she had scar. And some said, I cannot have baby because of that I feel. And then I heard so many sad story, but they keep, keep it as a secret. I did. And then think, parents cannot tell their own story to, to their children. I couldn't. Until the last moment I delivered my baby, I didn't tell. I, I had a strong fear whether my babies are healthy one or not. Then I didn't tell them so many years later actually face to face. Nowadays, grandchildren listen to their mother's and their grandmother's story so many years later by from grandmother. Mothers don't want to. And the survivors said, don't come to my house. I can tell my story, but don't come to my house with the camera. Don't ask any questions of my children. Still now, this is a real story. Survivors want, does not want, do not want to tell their story. I don't, I don't want people blame and my relatives blame. Why you tell your story? Don't include my story because my close and the relatives have very sad story like my sister's husband spouse 
His house was in the center of the Peace Park. All of his family is still missing. He tried to find out any kind of information for 60 years. He didn't report that. Missing means that he wants to believe they are still alive. And then there are so many people like that. And then and uh, there is a typical and the radiation and the victim, the spouse of my brother, and she was my classmate, but she died without having any scars and no burn. She was under her grandmother's. And then grandmother had this be a burn to die the next day. But after that, daughter suffering two weeks by radiation and died. Because of that, we do not speak in a house. This is what we want to, uh, all of you want to know, still now we have been suffering the invisible scars and the fears. I have still have radiation fear. Agurasan, thank you so much for sharing your harrowing experience with us and, and the people watching from, from home. Um, today is marks the 75th anniversary um, of that fateful day. So we appreciate you taking time to impart what you learned from that day and what we can carry that information forward. I would like to share information uh, with everybody still watching. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the National Atomic Testing Museum, or the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. Yes. Uh, you can go to our website at um, nationalatomictestingmuseum.org yes. or yes. the hpmmuseum.jp yes. for event information, uh, ways to donate to our institutions. And um, we couldn't be more grateful to have you here. It was our pleasure to, to host you. Uh, and thank you to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum for partnering with us on this event. Yeah. And um, next on August 27th is our, our next uh, distinguished lecture, which yes. is going to be featuring Mark Adams from the um, Truman Presidential Library and Museum. That's going to be on August 27th at 6 p.m. Thank you so much. Do you like? Would you like to say bye to everybody, uh, Agurasan? Anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to say thank you for those days. Because of that, this is a really good chance. Thank you for sharing my story with you. Bye-bye.